touchdown. Well, Keith, you talk about what are, what are they doing differently. On the first play of the game, the Gators blitz to stop the run. Florida State is ready for it. They're going big time down the field. An excellent throw and catch. A great way to start for the nose. A 55-yard reception, pass and run, and they put it actually on the 32 of Florida. First down for the Seminoles. And Pooh Bear Williams looking for the snap signal because it is very noisy. It is Warwick Dunn having a little trouble getting around the corner, and he won't make the corner. He's going to go out of bounds with about a yard or maybe two-yard loss. The offensive front for the Florida State Seminoles is a good, solid group. Todd Fordham has had an outstanding season. Marcus Long is a good one. Walter Jones can be a great one in time. The defensive front for the Gators, Reggie McGrew is a redshirt freshman who's growing in stature. He's improved steadily through the season, coming off an ankle injury. It is Khalid Abdullah in the backfield right now. The pass is thrown out to him from a slot position, and Abdullah will get it down inside the 25 to about the 24. Remember that Rock Preston is off the team. He's no longer a member of the team, and that's why Abdullah has been moved up in the order. The Florida linebackers, led by James Bates, the leading tackler on the team this season. He's a horse in the middle, and the secondary for the Gators is a very, very good one. There really isn't a weakness in that group. Three of the best players there, Keith, were all conference players, those defensive backs. So it is third down and three right now. As they work out of the shotgun, hand the ball inside. And it is Warwick Dunn, who's at 5'9", 182 or three pounds, sort of disappeared in the pile as Ed Chester and Reggie McGrew got to him in a hurry. And it's going to be fourth down and about two now. Take a look at Steve Spurrier, only two and three in bowl games. His record against Bobby Bowden is not much better. Decision being made here by Florida State is what are we going to do? And on fourth down and two, they're going to go. Now here comes some more of the Bowden trickery here as new people come racing onto the field and they turn and they give the ball to the big guy, Pooh Bear Williams, the 280-pound fullback. He's hit by Mike Peterson, a linebacker, and Peterson stopped him short of the first down. So they take a chance instead of trying for three, and they don't make it. Keith, what they did was they substituted late. They got their short yardage uh, offense in there, the big blockers, and before Florida could get their big people in on short yardage defense, it didn't make any difference. Florida stopped them with the personnel they had on the field. So here come the Gators now for their play, first play of the ball game from the 23-yard line first down. Elijah Williams opens up at the tailback position for the Gators. And here you see some new formations now. They'll pop a man out of there. That's Williams going in motion. And they've got three wide outs as they go to work out of the shotgun. You didn't see this a whole lot in Tallahassee, but you'll see it a lot tonight. The pass was thrown very quickly to Riddell Anthony, thrown a little bit behind him, and he could not reel it in. Now, Danny Werfel has had one of those kind of seasons that you tell your grandchildren about. He's won every kind of honor there is. He's had a remarkable career. However, he is 1-3-1 and one against Florida State in his career. The backs and receivers, of course, 18 touchdowns this season for Riddell Anthony. That is an NCAA record. He's had 11 straight uh, receptions for touchdowns. 11 in a row in games for touchdowns. So he's had a terrific season. Purple again has time, and when you give him time, he'll pick your bones. Jaquez Green, the little guy, 5'9", 163, taken down by Iron Capers, but you can move the chains at the first down. This is the group right here that has to play a good football game for the Florida Gators. Ryan Kalick is, and uh, Donnie Young are the only constants in that entire offensive front. Wiley Rich is the key, Keith. Uh, the previous game they had five sacks up the middle 
They truly miss Jeff Mitchell in there at the There's center no position. No question about that. Huge loss when he went down with a bad leg and is out for the year. Seminoles are in the neutral zone. In fact, they're across the line, and Werfel has a free play to Ike Hilliard. And Hilliard with a big play down inside the Florida State 40 yard line. Penalty will be on Boulware, trying to anticipate, and Danny Werfel changed up the count on him and trapped him. Boulware was one of the players that was not feeling well before the ball game. The middle linebacker Bush and Boulware both had flu-like symptoms, and they caught him off sides. Offside on the defense. The penalties refused. That's Mr. Randy Crystal. He's the referee heading a Big 12 officiating crew. The Florida State linebackers, Daryl Bush is the other man Bob mentioned who's been having some health problems. Crawford and Crockett are solid. The defensive uh, secondary for Florida State, the two corners are going to have a busy night. That's a given. You know that. They're really going to have to play tonight against this bunch of wide receivers from Florida. This is the running back, Williams. And Williams will pick up about one yard to the 38-yard line. So we're now beginning to settle down a <laughs> little bit. The first five minutes, I was uh, didn't really have time to warn you that you probably ought to move a yard or two away from your television set because some shrapnel might come flying. I mean, these people were so high when they came out tonight. It was unbelievable. Well, and the crowd that's stuffed the dome pretty high themselves. It's a rematch, but oh my goodness, what a prize is waiting to be claimed. From the 38 yard line, second down and nine. Pass down the middle, and it is incomplete. Anthony running a crossing pattern. He was available, but Werfel couldn't find him. Bolware was right in Werfel's face. Florida's run five or six offensive plays, and every one of them, Werfel has been in the shotgun. One running play, the rest were pass plays. Take a look at Bolware who led the nation in sacks, number 58, gets a piece of his heels. This is what uh, Spurrier wants to do, Keith. He wants to play pitch and catch. It's an ideal uh, situation. Third down and nine. Werfel down, drills the ball into the 15, right between the one and the five, and Anthony has another catch. And that will be a first down. Just getting underway in the Nokia Sugar Bowl at the Superdome in New Orleans. We played just a little more than four minutes. And it's first down Gators from the 29 yard line of Florida State. Check, checking off. Werfel looking, penalty flag run, goes to the end zone, catch is made, let's check the flag. Referee has called touchdown, the linesman coming over to talk to him, let's see what the linesman offers in the conversation. It's going to be a holding against Florida, I'm pretty sure, and that's going to take away a touchdown. The Gators lost a touchdown in the game in Tallahassee. Illegal formation on the offense. Illegal formation this time. Did it for Florida State, but Spurrier himself was there. First time anybody could remember a head coach yeah, coming. Exactly. I think hey. I, the, the penalty, the penalty for that, like, Keith, I don't think there are enough men on the line. I don't know whether they called the, the tackle that's closest to us over here on this side. Well, he's way back, isn't You he? have to have seven men on the line of scrimmage. So they lose it on that call, and it's first and 15. Yeah, that's what it was. Ball is at the 34-yard line of Florida State. Pressure coming. Werfels passes away. Passes caught by Hilliard. And he makes the reception down at about the 17-yard line, and that's the first down. 
The difference in this ball game early on, Keith, is that Werfel is getting the ball off. The rush is getting there, but it's getting there a tad late. And it's the shotgun that's giving him time to see it and release it. He's throwing the ball real early. The shotgun, he sees how much time he has, and he just throws it out there, gives it a little air. He is outstanding with his touch. First down, Gators, no 17-yard line, no score. Werfel's pass thrown to the corner of the end zone. It is way beyond the intended receiver, and you get a penalty flag as Riddell Anthony was trying to break toward the ball. The defender would not let him do it. It was Troy Sanders, and it gets a flag. So Troy Saunders it is, not Sanders, Saunders commits the foul, and uh, it appears that at least he was the one who committed the foul because that's where the flag was thrown. So it is first and goal to go for the Florida Gators at the nine yard line. Lower right corner is the interference. Orful threw that ball so quickly that he was just trying to jam it. You know, whether it's catchable or not, I think if he hadn't jammed, he could have run under it. So you can't say that. He didn't give him a yeah. chance to get to it. Yeah, that's right. So first and goal, they stay in the shotgun. From the nine, Werfel. Here they come. Into the corner. He's there. It's too long. It was Anthony, and the ball was about a yard over his head. Keith, what you're seeing is, is the best of Spurrier. He's had a month to plan and scheme and plan for this game. He is outstanding on the opening drive of a ball game during the season. When he has only a week, he takes the best plays and puts him in that first offensive drive. They've scored a lot on their opening drives this year. Second down and goal from the nine for the Gator. Into the end zone, Hilliard. No flags. This time, touchdown. blitz and that's what they're doing you leave one on one the receiver tell you to just going to run a little post pattern to the wide side of the field from the shotgun you've got a feel on how much time you've got he lays it to the inside that's like stealing right there you've got to put pressure you can't cover Werfel in this system you've got to put pressure on Werfel flags all over the place and while they sort this out let me tell you who the rest of the officials are because they're going to earn their money tonight. Randy Crystal, the referee, John Davidson, the umpire, Carl Johnson, the linesman, line judge, Roger Rogers, Scott Cook, the field judge, side judge is Phil Laurie, Willie Westbrook, Weisbrook is the back judge, Tom Allers is the alternate. Florida comes in as the most penalized team in the SEC. Florida State comes in the most penalized team in the ACC. Florida has 1,095 yards on 125 flags this season. That is a lot. But as Steve says, it's a lot of ticky-tack stuff. It's uh, five yards here and five yards there and misformations and things like that. And the kick is up, and the kick is good by Bart Edmiston, who himself is quite a story, who's back healthy now and able to do the kicking. Nine plays, all from the shotgun. They just didn't get there quick enough. If you don't get to Werfel, you're going to get burned. 9.48 to go in the first quarter, and the Florida Gators get on the board first. I think, Bob, this is a key time in the, the whole scheme of things in this ballgame. Florida State right here needs to answer. Well, Florida State, open, opening drive, had a nice drive, took yep. it down to the 20 and went for it on fourth down. Yep. Maybe a field goal getting on the board would have been score. the right thing to do. That's in the end zone. It'll not be returned, and the Noles will start at their 20 first down. Join us on America Online for live inter interactive play-by-play -play stats of today's ball game and tonight's game, to be absolute on it. The keyword ABC Sports on America Online. Who 
Tyre Williams and Warwick Dunn will be in the backfield for Florida State. Their opening play of the game was a long pass to Andre Cooper. This is their second possession. Gators got them all up there. And the play clock goes to zero. And Florida State has burned the clock. That's what they've done. That'll cost them five yards. They were concerned with something over on the right side as Florida sent Dead ten ball. people up. Delay on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. It remains first down. You can see Please Kevin Long. On the game clock. Kevin Long kept uh, motioning to somebody on the right side because they had loaded uh, the top side uh, of, of the uh, defensive alignment. Still, the offense going in after a kickoff should have no problem getting the ball snapped within 25 seconds. They're going to reset the clock. I think uh, Randy said put the game clock. The game clock. Yeah. Put some time back on it. He wants 948 on it and now he's got it and we'll go ahead and play the game. In the overall series Florida leads 24 14 and two but that's deceptive because things have changed in recent years as Florida State's program which is in its 50th anniversary this year has emerged under the leadership of Bowden and certainly Florida has emerged under the leadership of Spurrier who is the winningest Gator coach ever. And Florida has only won two of the last 11 in this series, Keith. There's been one tie. Busby throwing again. Looks like the same play. It is Messam down underneath the ball, and he can't reel it in, defending his Fred Weary. So this time, Weary doesn't let the man get past him as he did in the first play. He kept him within reach, and he knocked it away. This Florida defense is pretty darn gone good. We talk about in the uh, FSU defense. Florida is ranked in, in every category in the nation. Bob Stoops came in this year from uh, Kansas State and said, Steve, it's great to work for him. Just turns it over, lets me do, lets me run the defense. It is second down and 15. Busby throws it again. He's got a man coming back into the middle of the field. That's Cooper with his second catch of the ball game. Trying to get a little uh, wide receiver screen going in the middle. And he's got something out of it up to about the 24-yard line. I think I think the reasoning why Florida State is throwing Keith and they're throwing on first down is that the Gators are out there with one thing on their mind, stop Warwick Dunn from running. So the Seminoles are throwing to get their mind off of it. And then later on, they're going to come back with Dunn. Third down and six. Busby's pass is good to Messam. Messam curling back inside. Gets enough momentum out of the turn to pick up a first down up near the 35-yard line with Anton Lott there defending. There's no question that this is good thinking on the part of the Seminoles. Busby's got to step up. He's got to take some pressure off the running game. Charlie Ward, I mean, uh, Warwick Dunn. Charlie Ward's the old roommate. And uh, no question about it. Out of the shotgun, Busby rolls, gets some room, got a man open. He's good to Green. E.G. Green goes out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. First Dan down, Seminoles at the Gator 28. Danny Cannell last year, Charlie Ward a few years ago. This was a pass offense first. Now it's been run with, with Warwick Dunn. But they're opening up. And Busby is stepping up. They've got everybody open downfield. Good game planning. So another big play for the Gators, and they put him back on the chalk, back at the 31-yard line, and Busby rolling to the right, goes underneath with it, and the pass is incomplete, and that one was not very pretty. It was intended for Dugan's number 80, and he really had no chance to catch it. This is the second time these two teams have played in 33 days. Spurrier changed to the shotgun and went right down the field and scored. 
the nose or opening up, throwing on first down, rolling out right and left and throwing deep to get the, some running room for Warwick Dunn. Busby now five out of seven and is passing for 119 yards. Eight and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Seven to nothing. Florida leads. FSU trying to respond and whistles again. Stop them. And timeout is charged. Stars and stripes out of Pompano Beach, Florida, with Captain Larry Chambers was with us. But the bog, which has been a real problem around the New Orleans area for a week, the Stars and Stripes is at rest at the moment. Steve Spurrier, oh, he's wound tight. Ooh. Mm. He's paying attention. His defense is on the field. He usually lets uh, Bob Stoops take care of the defense. So the ball is on the 32-yard line, second down and 10 for Florida State. And Busby is in the shotgun. Gives him four wideouts. Gets it off. Passes just off the hands. Uh, Lavernus Coles, number seven. Coles is 6-1, and I mean a burner. But that ball was thrown hard and high. Right. And he's a young and Keith. He's just a, a true freshman, a running back that's working at wide receiver this year, and he'll be better and better. But he probably got that one in a little bit too far to the inside of the field. The veteran Andre Cooper is back on the field now. He has two catches. He's at the top of the picture for you. Number one. It is third and ten. Let go the other way with it. And they will not get a first down out of it. The ball comes down to the 25 as Wayne Messam makes that short reception. And they'll be looking at fourth down at about three and a half yards. So Scott Bentley will come on as Bobby Bowden wants to see some numbers on his share of the scoreboard. He will try a field goal. He's had a great year. The ball's going to be spotted down at the 33. It will be a 43-yard kick. In the season, he's 16 of 18. He's got plenty of leg for this, and it is good. So Bentley pops one through for the Seminoles at 7.49, first quarter, 7-3 Gators. And here we go with Florida State getting on the board to make it a 7-3 ball game. Florida leading. Bentley will kick off for the nose. Hilliard and Williams waiting for it for the Gators. It's a short kick. It's very high, and it's taken by Hilliard at about the 12. Look out. Up, they got him at the 40. He was about a step and a half away from taking off. On the first possession, Starring Danny Werfel. This is what happened, some of it. Nine plays, all in the shotgun. Paid a price. Five hits out of the nine plays, but they got seven points. Renard Wilson got that last one. It is Fred Taylor in the backfield now with Dwayne Mobley with Werfel working out of the shotgun. And looks like that may be the way they'll go all night. <laughs> I, I, don't blame them. It I worked pretty well the first time. Knowles come creeping up on defense, and a penalty flag comes out of the umpire's pocket. That's against the offense. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. It remains first down. Little things like that have been driving Steve crazy all year. That's why that uh, penalty total is so high. So it'll be first and 15 now. That average is out to about 10 penalties a game and about 91 yards. Snapped at six seconds on the play clock. The pass is thrown to Jacques Green. And Green is belted hard at the 47-yard line and taken down. James Cozy brought him down and it was Coles' man that caught the ball. What the Gators did that time, Keith, is they showed a four-wide receiver look, like a spread look, 
motioned one of the backs back into the backfield where they had two extra blockers to block in case they had a blitz. So they present a four wide receiver like there's not many people left to block and then motion back in to pick up linebacker. They've taken the nickel man Saunders out of the game and sent uh, Vernon Crawford back in a linebacker and the blitz is coming. They hand it off inside to Taylor and Taylor is close to a first down at midfield. They're just short. It'll be about a foot short. Hughes tonight on ABC start the new year with a brand new episode. Of That's my show there, coach. Good one. That's mine. Hand off to the running back. No. Jump all over Fred Taylor and stop him. He lost a yard. <laughs> That's a tough bunch. Well. Shevin Smith is number 30, and he comes up. That strong safety is up and around that line of scrimmage a lot. Let's see what Sawyer's going to do. I wouldn't be surprised if he went for it. And he's going to. That's Jackson, Terry Jackson, a running back, sophomore out of Gainesville, coming in. Steve's attitude is, oh, what the heck? I'm, uh, the chances of me making this are pretty doggone good, and it's early in the game. Well, you know, we can get more points later on. Fourth and one at the 49. Contact. Florida's applauding as if the nose were off sides and the nose are pointing that Florida moved. Well, the, the, the quarterback pulled out. Dead ball. Ball start in the offense. Well, the quarterback can't pull, pull, pull out. Pull now they'll punt it. Watch Danny Werfel pull out. Now he can't do that. Did he have his hands under center? Looked like he had his hands under center. I mean, yep, he did. Yeah, if, if you have your hands under center and you pull out, you can't do that. That's illegal motion. Big old Andre Wadsworth. Those have uh, blocked six kicks. And the Gators have had problems with the. Uh, There's nobody punt back. Blocks. Nobody back here. Gonna let it go. Bobby Stevenson gets it away, and the ball takes a Gator roll, and it's gonna roll, and they're gonna kill it down inside the five yard line. So Florida State sent nobody deep. Yeah. Took a shot at it, and couldn't get the left footer. They blocked his first punt up in Tallahassee, but they couldn't get him this time, and he winds up with five yards, and he's excited because of what happened to him on the first punt, November 30th, Tallahassee. He's had three punts blocked this year, and they've all been on the first punt of the ball game. Florida State coming after him on the first punt of this game, did not have a man back, and when you don't put a man back to catch the ball, what happens is, the ball can roll inside your five-yard line, and this is very poor starting position. Warwick Dunn is in the tailback position, but the quarterback, Busby, keeps it and tries to wedge it out and get a little breathing room. Dunn has carried the ball one time so far here in the first quarter with five minutes remaining. But fear not, you will see him. You'll see him, no question. <laughs> But I've been impressed with Busby so far, Keith, because he stepped up. They knew they had to spread the wealth. They had to have more balance, offense and defense, and Busby has thrown the ball well. Messerman Cooper, the wideouts for the Knowles. Bobby Bowden didn't mind throwing the ball out of the end zone. Like that. And that is incomplete, and that is very good defense for the Florida Gators by Johnny Rutledge, number 58. The pass intended for the tight end, Melvin Pearsall. This is good coverage by Rutledge. He's looking for that tight end all the way. Not supposed to hold him, Johnny. He didn't know whether it was going to be a run or a pass there, Coach. He's a <laughs> linebacker. He says, you're blocking me. I'm going to jam you. <laughs> Andre Cooper leaves the lineup now. It is third and eight. Ball resting at the three. Florida leading Florida State seven to three at four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Busby to Dunn. Dunn can't find in the daylight. Mike Peterson, number 29, put a helmet on him. And the Seminoles will have to punt it out of the end zone. 
this a good series for the defense of the Gators. They got them down there on the punt. They kept them pinned in. Three plays. Now you got a punt. Looks like uh, the Gators may get this ball back in very good field position. Florida State has a good one. Sean Liss averaged just under 44 yards per punt on 61 of them this year. Jacquez Green is waiting at the Seminole 45. Liss gets it out. Pretty good kick. And he sends it back to the 48 where Green has some room. inside the 30. Down at about the 27 yard line, a 46 yard punt, but a 21 yard return. So the Florida Gators, field position, field position, kicking game. And they exactly, decide things. Exactly. The special teams, that goes in favor of Florida because Bowden tried to block the punt. They got four poor field position on their own two yard line. They didn't move it out. And now Florida takes it over. Great field position. And they stay in the shotgun with Taylor and Mobley back there with Werfel. And the whistle. And flags. And the flare of temper. We've had the officials have been busy, but it hasn't been an emotional problem at all with the two teams. They've both been very well controlled. False start on the offense. Except the first for the first false down. start. I suppose you could say that's emotional. Plus the fact it's kind of hard to hear in here sometimes. Yes, it is. Well, that'll move the ball back to the 32-yard line with three minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first quarter. Danny Werfel from the shotgun. He's had six, completed six of nine for 85 yards and a touchdown. It's the first time he's been under center right here. First and 15. Last time, well, second time. Last time he pulled out and got a pin. Exactly. That ball's thrown underneath everybody to the fullback, Mobley. And Mobley is down close to a first down at about the 16 yard line. The Werfel rolls out to get better vision and by a little time, nobody deep. He took what was available, and it turned out it was named Mobley, 231-pound fullback from Brooksville, Florida. I, I think this is good, Keith. They were sacked six times in the previous game with the Seminoles. One of the ways you can avoid the hard run is get outside the pocket. You can throw quick. You can get uh, keep more guys in the block, or you can get your quarterback outside the pocket. Werfel doesn't have a lot of ability and mobility, but he certainly can move around with it. And the Seminoles call timeout. Sean Hamlet came running up to the umpire in a hurry and called time. And uh, Bush comes to the sidelines to talk with the defensive coordinator, Mickey Andrews. The Seminoles didn't have the right personnel in the ball game, so Bush just called timeout. A moment now with our colleague, Lynn Swan. Money. Thank you very much, Keith. You know, when you have a rematch of two teams, you don't have to change your philosophy, but you do have to approve, improve in certain areas. And I listed a couple of things from the last game that I thought these two teams needed to improve in. We, we've already seen the results of penalties. Florida lost a touchdown, although they came back and got it. Look at time of possession. If the offense can possess the football, that means you're keeping that other team off the field because they both can score very quickly. Third down conversion, a, a, an abysmal 25% for Florida State in the first game. They need to improve that. And the turnover aspect, you see three for the University of Florida in the last rematch. They do not, that last game, they do not want to have that kind of ball game. What it all means is that you've got to, to execute better the second time around. You don't have to change a thing, but if you can execute and improve the way you play, you've got a chance of making the outcome work out in your favor, Keith. How come he didn't buy a ticket for that big fella, Schaefer Dean? Bring him. Uh, well, <laughs> he's got a ticket right in front of the TV set for the baby. <laughs> uh, the son of uh, Lynn and Charina arrived this year. He looks like he's going to be a fullback to me. <laughs> First down from the 17 yard line now. As Werfel looks and throws, he's got some air on it. Riddell Anthony cannot reach. The ball went to the outside, and Anthony turned to the inside and then couldn't make the recovery against James Cozy. 
I think a couple of things, Keith, that are different this game than the last game. Is first, that, that Florida, Florida is not up in Tallahassee playing under before a hostile crowd. Secondly, they're indoors on a fast track. There is no wind. Up in that other game, the wind, the ball was sailing, and a lot of Werfel's passes were going incomplete. This is perfect conditions for a passing team. Second down and 10 with 2.55 to go in the first quarter in a long quarter. That's a little pop inside to Anthony, and it goes through his hands. Cozy exults in the play, but in fact, the ball just simply went through the hands of Anthony. There's a pillar number 69. He missed uh, the last three or four games of the season blocking on Bullwear. They're not holding that ball very long. It's all quick passes. He's throwing it quickly, not allowing the defensive ends a chance to get him. Is that going to make uh, Mickey Andrews change his defense for Florida State a little bit? Well, he's he's going to he got to keep keep putting pressure on. You got to make him throw it quick. That's what happens right there. You make him throw it quick, you mess up their timing. Green was breaking free. But because of the pressure, the ball was thrown and thrown high. If he could have held that ball a little bit longer, he would have broken into the open. Yep, he would have been wide open. But because of the, the fear of, of, of the sack, they're getting rid of it quickly. Watch how long he holds this ball. He gets it and lets it go. You can see how, how, how Green was breaking free, but it's all gone. This will be a 32 yard field goal try by Bart Edmiston. He recovered from a knee sprain that he suffered in the game in Tallahassee. He missed the SEC championship, but he's back healthy and he just nailed one right down the highway to make it Florida 10 and Florida State 3 at 2.44 to go in the first quarter. Matt Reddy, the deep people, Stringer and Coles. Can't coach speed, that's why they're back there. They can just tear you up if they get a little daylight on you. And Coles, a running back out of high school, comes up to about the 25-yard line. Well, here's a look so far. Uh, rushing yardage, Florida State has zero. Warwick Dunn, not a factor in this ball game yet. And Florida State passing for more yardage than Danny Werfel and the Florida Gators offense. And um, but I'm sure we haven't seen the last of Warwick Dunn. They have tried it. And he's been in some routes and pass routes. They have not thrown the ball to him. From the 25, then Busby sets him up at 2:38 to play, and here's Dunn running in traffic. Will pick up about three yards. He's only 185 pounds. You're not going to go in there and hurt anybody, but you give him a little bit of daylight and it's see you later. You're looking at his hip pocket. Over the last two games against the Gators, he's averaged 100 and 153 yards per game. He is a big play back. He is back. If you go back further, the last four games against the Gators, he's been outstanding. Comes the pressure. They've got it. Something wrong with that play, Keith. Cooper Williams, 22, was standing there. It looked like he did, he was running some, another play. Cameron Davis, in his first bowl game, comes up limping. Busby just runs to his left. All indication it was going to be a pocket pass. I don't know if he checked off or uh, or what, but it seemed like everybody was expecting him to be in the pocket. Gators have had a lot of defensive injuries, Keith, in that line. Offensive be, line and defensive line. Third and 19 now. And Busby's got a whole lot of green in front of him, so he pulls it down and takes off and gets a pretty good lick from number four, Lawrence Wright. Shea showers the free safety and Wright the strong safety. Showers on the ground with him and Wright really popped him. And he... 12 yards short of his first down. Keith, what you're seeing is the offenses have kind of cooled down now. The first drive for both of them. Now the defensive coordinator and the coaches up in the press box are finding out what are they doing. All right, we're going to adjust. Now they're coming back and uh, 
and slowing everybody down. That happened in the third quarter in exactly. the November game. There was no scoring exactly. in the third quarter. Exactly. That's a low snap, and it's almost blocked, but it's a good kick out of there. And it's at the 32-yard line by Jacquez Green. So Sean Liss with a white shirt right in his face gets the ball out of trouble. 44-yard punt. A half a minute to go in the first quarter. This first quarter is lasting a week. It is, isn't it? That's when, when you have uh, throwing teams, you stop the clock. Incompletions. Harry Jackson is in the backfield with Jerome Evans, and they're working out of the shotgun. Number seven is Werfel. You can pick him out. He's the big guy in the middle. He's a big, thick guy, too. And the thing flimsy about this fellow, I mean, he is a big, wide body. Pressure coming, passes away. Penalty flag is thrown. Jacquez Green makes the catch. The play is good for 11 yards, but let's see about the penalty. Boy, he's throwing that ball quick. Quickly. Offside on the defense. Take the play. First down, Gators. First down. Florida State jumped out to a 17 to nothing lead in their regular season game. Florida came back, had a chance to tie it at the halftime, missed it. Third quarter was scoreless. Right now, tonight, it's Florida out to the lead, 10-3, and the handoff to Terry Jackson. Jackson is a 213-pound sophomore, and he picks up about eight yards on that play. And the first quarter is over. After one, and Nokia Sugar Bowl, it's Florida 10, and Florida State. Here's the score. Florida leading. Gators in pretty good shape in this ball game at this point because they own it at the 47 yard line of Florida State where it is second down and the long one about a yard and a half and Werfel goes back under center with Elijah Williams behind him Peter Boulware and Darrell Bush are both out of the defensive lineup for Florida State both being struggling with the flu that ball is thrown and dropped by Elijah Williams he had a touchdown in his pocket and he just dropped the ball. One of the new plays that Florida has put in for this ball game. Wilson number 55 working on Collins. Takes a little bit of time to, to do this and this is this is what happened the other time last ball game. That ball should have been caught hit him right in the helmet. That was one of the one of the few times Keith they took a little bit longer to throw the football. Perry Jackson is in the lineup now, and there's Whistle. No play. no play. First quarter numbers while they sort this out. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. It remains third down. Minus one yards uh, for Florida State. Florida's not running the ball either. Uh, Florida State throwing for a little bit more. Eight first downs for the University of Florida. Neither one of them doing very good on third down conversions. Five yard penalty will make it third down and six. Timeout is called. At the beginning of the second quarter of play, this is the Nokia Sugar Bowl. During that last series, but Keith it had nothing to do with the flu-like symptoms he has. He was just out because he wasn't a part of the defensive package for that time. If he's going to suffer the effects, it'll be in the second half, Keith. Okay, Swanee. There's a look at Daryl Bush. Uh, he was a little bit under the weather before the ball game. They need him in that lineup. He is the leader. He gets them in the right play, in the right alignment. He is a very bright. Uh, linebacker Chuck Amato right there is the linebacker coach for Florida State so it is third down and six after the five yard penalty and they go back to the shotgun
Defender fell down. Ike Hilliard has the ball. There's a penalty flag thrown by the man on the sidelines, the linesman. I don't know, Keith. He threw it there. He, he may, they may rule that he pushed off. Yep, maybe an offensive call against Florida. Because it was thrown by the official right over here on this side, looking right at him. And Byron Capers was on the ground. Pass interference on the offense. It'll be a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, and it remains third down. Take a look at him over here. He's just going to push off before he runs the little slant to the inside. Receiver comes down, there's contact, and the defensive back goes down, and the, re and, and the re official right over on that side threw the flag right at both of the rear where the uh, two men were. So the Gators now are shooting themselves in the old toe as they come all the way back to the 33 yard line, where it is third down and 21. Back on their own 33. Having been down on the 30, uh, the 46 of the Florida State, and Andre Wadsworth finally erupts in the middle of the line. He had a big ball game in the regular season meeting. The interior linesman did, and big Wadsworth got loose on this one. Again, the sack comes from up the middle from the uh, reverse side. Wadsworth, five of the six sacks in the first ball game came from the inside. Wadsworth had one. The other defensive tackle, Spain, had two. That gets Robbie Stevenson, the left-footed punter, into the game and sends Peter Warwick deep to receive the kick for Florida State. Stevenson's first kick with no one back to return it was 55 yards. No pressure. Good kick by Robbie. Warwick waiting, takes it at the 33, dances, finds a little room, and then down he goes at about the 38-yard line. You got a penalty flag. It's thrown back on the 30-yard line on the Florida side of the field. And it'll be a 10 yard penalty at 13.32 to go in the first half. We'll take a timeout with the Gators leading 10 to 3. 10 to 3 ball game in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. The time remaining you see reflected there. And Busby had a good uh, first quarter. Over 124 yards in the first game, and tonight already thrown for 125. And that that figures. That Bobby was talking about it during the week that that the quarterback had to play better in this ball game, and, and they knew it, and, and everybody knew it. Peter Warwick had a big ball game too in the first game, but uh, he hasn't seen the ball yet tonight. They're all over, but I mean they didn't give him any chance at all. Big Ed Chester, the sophomore out of Spring Hill, was thrashing on him before he could set his feet to throw and the loss is back inside the 15 to the 14. Well, Chester is right here and he's just going to bust right through the inside of that uh, line. That's long number 78 and uh, that's his seventh sack of the season. They lead the SEC in sacks you know all the all the attention goes to the nose but good defense for the Gators. Second down and 18. Busby having a little trouble. Oh, my goodness. That ball was almost taken into the end zone by big old Tim Bochamp. I mean, he had it on his hands, but he couldn't find the handle. And the big defensive end walks around. Now, this, thinking this about is what might have been. The right defensive end, the white shirt. Watch him. His little screen. Dunn's going to try and hide. This is what Bobby Bowden mean when he said, we don't ask. Busby to win the ball game. We just don't want him to lose it. If that would have been intercepted, those are the types of things they don't want to put too much pressure on the quarterback. But with but with but Warwick Dunn not getting much yardage, Keith, they're putting more and more pressure on the quarterback. That was almost a disaster for the nose. Shotgun. You've got Cooper and uh, E.G. Green down here, and this 
This is a reverse with Peter Warwick carrying it. Running back in traffic. He breaks free for a moment and picks up a first down. No, he didn't get the first down. Oh, nope, sorry. The big sack prevents him from getting his first down. He got across the 25-yard line after running about 40 yards and risking his life going back into the middle where the big trees were. It's a kind of an interesting play, though. I think that's one of the new yeah. ones. Both of these guys, uh, Bowden and Spurrier, love these new plays. So Sean Liss is out for his third punt of the night, 46 and 44 on the first two. And Green is a dynamite punt returner. Nice tight, deep carry. And uh, they don't crowd him. So everything is legal downfield, and it'll be the Florida ball at the 27 yard line after a 48 yard. Steve Spurrier watching his team now take possession at their own 27 yard line leading 10 to 3 Bobby Bowden a bit frustrated in that his offense has not produced much so far and uh, they've got four wideouts now in the Florida alignment with Werfel back there by himself come. high snap here they come he gets it away he's got hit here and he's got the ball and he's out of bounds at the 27 yard line the penalty flag way back up field where the quarterback worker was buried. They may be a roughing call back up field. Roughing the passer on the defense. That was a big play though. Well the blitz was on and they had single coverage. There was a free man. Take a look from behind. The blitz is on but he's in shotgun. Nobody picks up uh, Crawford, and this time, unlike the last time, he gets it off. There's the penalty for hitting the quarterback. If he had, if he'd kept his uh, head up and uh, kept the shoulder out of his back, he probably wouldn't have been flagged. But Randy Crystal didn't make any bones about it. He threw the flag, and the football advances all the way down to the Florida State 13-yard line. And that was a good call. There's no question about that. Uh, Steve's been belly aching uh, for the last month about late hits, but uh, Mickey Andrews has to put pressure on Werfel if he's got a chance to win this ball game. Right now, the Gators are knocking on the door again. Same alignment, and Werfel throws it to the corner, and it is incomplete. Intended for Anthony, defending Colsey, and that was a very good defensive job by James. Here's a look at it. This is what Florida likes to do when they get inside the 15-yard line. They, their, their receiver, good jumping ability, really should have had it. Uh, Colsey's only 5'10", Anthony's 6 feet, but he can really get up there. Well, James was right in his numbers. Second down and 10. He's telling them what to do. When he raises that foot up, he tells the center, okay, you can snap it when you're ready. Pressure, but Werfel throws it back to the other way. And it is out of bounds, short of the goal line to Fred Taylor. He went out at about the two. That was a hard throw. You got to be strong to make that. Back across his body. He's got three wide receivers to our left side. They are covered. Taylor's going to slip out and come right across. Right there, number 21. He must know from practice that that play is usually open. If the wide receivers aren't open, go back to your halfback. So it's first and goal from the two-yard line. Hand off to Taylor. Touchdown.
The extra point try from Bart Edmiston, senior out of Pensacola. Nails it. Out of Michael Yorkton's snap and Robbie Stevenson. 17 to 3. As they go 73 yards in 26 seconds. Doesn't take long when you got a great big old play and a 15-yard penalty at the end of it. Here's the kickoff by Teague, and he killed it all the way into the end zone. There, oh, he's coming with it from four yards out of the end zone. And paid for it up at the 16-yard line. They're jumping around, but he's going to be called down, and it'll be Florida State ball. And the Seminole offense right now, Bob, is caught up in the old tango gig. Well, they've, they've, they've been three and out on their last three possession. Dunn has rushed for four, four times for zero yardage. Their last three possessions, they've been three plays and punted. And you need to get Warwick done into the offense. They've tried, Keith, that, op, that screen pass on the last possession just didn't work. It was almost intercepted. So Dunn is back there now with Busby out of the shotgun formation. Picks up uh, the rush. Dunn's a good blocker. Ball's thrown to Messam on the sidelines, and Wayne steps out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Well, there's not a whole lot on that one. Time remaining in the first half, 11-16. I think it's uh, they better watch out here because the, the the Delta is starting to leak a tad. And the Gators are, I mean, they're jacked up. They're flying right now. And once they get you reeling, get you back on your heels, they can put you 16. away. Second down and eight. Dropped by Wayne Messon. Thrown behind him a bit, thrown on his hip, and he couldn't pick it up, and here is Swanny. Well, their opponents, 28.7 to 7.14 to 1, and I can bet you this, Bobby Bott knows he's got to put a rope on these gators in his first half, or else Keith, they will drag him down into the swamp, and they'll never come out. I had a little trouble with getting the sound, but that's funny. Busby working out of the shotgun. Now he's got one, two, three, four. He's got five possibilities to throw the ball here. He goes down the middle with it, and no chance. E.G. Green was defended by Shea Showers. He had no chance to get to the ball. And once again, for Florida State, it's a one, two, three kick. Green's going to go to the center of the field and run a little square in. Showers is going to be right there as he reads it. That's not interference. Showers has as much right to the ball as does the receiver. Sean Liss is in for the punt, his fourth. His best one was the third. It was 48. He gets this one out of there. He doesn't get it to turn over, so it's a little shorter and possibly a return by Green. Yes. Green dancing around. You better, better corral him pretty quickly. He's at about the 49-yard line on his return of seven yards after a 40-yard punt. And so now the Gators are sitting in the middle of the field at their own 49-yard line first down. Season premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports will feature the NutraSweet World Challenge of Champions from Innsbruck, Austria. That's coming up. Saturday also will announce the Wide World Athlete of the Year for 1996. ABC's Wide World of Sports. Keith, this defense for Florida State needs to make something happen. They have been dominant all year, but they have not been dominant here tonight. The shotgun, the quick passing, and the quick throwing we have one sack by Florida State. Coming in, they led the nation in sacks with 67. Out of the shotgun, Werfel gives it off to Taylor. And 
Jordan Taylor. We'll move it over to the Florida State 49. We're picked up with two yards on the play. That's a new formation that the uh, Gators are using. They've got their two backs stacked in the backfield. And, and I think they do it, one, for per pass protection, Keith. Secondly, just to give them something to, else to think about. Florida's had great field position starting on their own 49 uh, on an average, and FSU not nearly as good. Second and eight. Oh, they got him this time. Got him on the 45 yard line. Peter Bullwear, number 58. Number 58, the top of the screen. Bullwear on Collins. And Taylor. And then he gets back and gets a piece of him. That's just outstanding work. Boy, he's good, isn't he? Bulwer came in with 19 sacks on the year. As we mentioned, he led the nation in sacks coming in. So back him up, make it third down and 14. Back at the 45. He doesn't play like he's sick to me, does he? No. Here they come. Whirlpool whistles it away in a hurry and goes down hard. Two of them hit him, and Whirlpool... And he's looking around to see if the building is turned upside down or what. It's Wilson and Bulware both in this one. Well, this is a middle screen, so the linemen are letting those ends go. You can't let them go. <laughs> Here's the other side. There's a lineman up there. Wadsworth or Spain or one of those guys is looking for the halfback. In the first game, the middle screen was a big part of the Gator offense. You cannot let those guys loose. You better call the paramedics. <laughs> you got that right. Robbie Stevenson's in the punt. D. Feaster is waiting to return it. He's a tailback. Stevenson hits it well. Back to the 13. Feaster comes up the middle. Good return. D. Feaster runs the ball out to about the 37-yard line. So Stevenson's low line drive punt of 42 yards is returned 24. Monday late night politically incorrect starring Bill Maher comes to ABC with first night guests including Roseanne, Julio, Ariana Huffington and G. Gordon Liddy. Hotter topics, cooler guests, win politically incorrect with Bill Maher. Premieres on ABC Monday after Nightline. First down, 37. And they snap it short to Warwick Dunn. And the first play of the night in which he had accomplished something. He moved it from the 37-yard line up to uh, close to the 45. And you got a Gator shaken up on the play. Johnny Rutledge, man shaking up. Rutledge, number 58, right of your screen. Snapped it directly to Dunn. He gets hit by his old man. He got hit by Lott. Yeah, Lott popped him. He's hearing some birdies in his helmet, I think. You know, uh, that ball almost kind of went between Dunn and Busby, and Dunn had to reach out to catch it. So that was close to not working too, but once the war gun gets his hands on it, you hold your breath. Watch this. Watch the ball was snapped. Uh, Dunn. Oh, oh. I don't think Dunn was ready. I don't think so either. He wasn't ready for the snap. I mean, everybody else was, but he was a little late. He probably forgot what the snap count was. That happens. So near the 45, second down and two. This is oh, this is Pooh Bear Williams. <laughs> Who in the world was that ran into him there? <laughs> it was Keith Kelsey, a freshman, 218 pounds, stands six feet tall. He's pretty well built, but remember now, Pooh Bear weighs 286 pounds. Kelsey's in there playing for Rutledge. You just went off, and if, and if. <laughs> if, if Rutledge hadn't have gotten hurt, he'd been over there. Kelsey's going to say, hey, Rutledge, come on back. I get in for one play, and I get Pooh Bear out in the flat. Oh, me. 
That's a good way to get that famous scar under your chin. <laughs> oh, boy. He's a little bit short. Of the first little bit short. See that Joe Germain got his uh, scar yesterday. Did you see that? Yes, yes, sure did. What a great game that was, huh? Wasn't that something? The Sun Devils fell, but they did it gallantly. Yeah, you got it. And admire the courage of the Buckeyes for uh, hitching up their britches Bruce, and coming back. Bruce Snyder, a great job with Arizona State, but you you got to be happy for John Cooper. Arizona State being the other undefeated team in Division 1A. And as we play this game tonight, Florida State, which is trailing by a score of 17 to 3 in the second quarter, is the only undefeated team left in Division 1A. Eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. The dive ahead for the first down following the offensive line surge, and it's good. So you can move the chain. Because of that loss, Arizona State uh, has one loss. If Florida State wins this game, they'll be the national champion, uh, being the only team left undefeated. If uh, Florida wins, and like you said earlier, you got okay. five. Big you argument. Got, you got five teams tied. The natural process, but, of course, you would you, think would be that Florida, with number up. three beating number one, right. would be voted the national championship. You would expect that. But it doesn't always happen. Pressure coming. Busby gets it away. The pass is almost intercepted on the ricochet. Oh, my goodness. Peter Warwick finally getting a chance, but the ball was thrown so hard by Busby, and Keith Council is the guy that almost came up with it for the Gators. Defensive tackle. We so may see this fellow tonight. Dan Kinder is the backup, has uh, done well when he's been in there. He played really well against Wake Forest, threw for a lot of yardage. Busby 8 of 16 and 129 yards has cooled off here in the second quarter. That ball is batted right back at him by Demetric Jackson. Strong safety, number 27, slapped it away. Jackson number right at the bottom 27 is lined up as if he was covering the wide receiver and at the last second when the ball was snapped blitz there's a strong safety blitz and uh, Busby didn't see him coming and he knocked the ball down that's a good defensive play and it's third and ten now for the Seminoles at their own 48 yard line. He's got a man messing down the middle. The pass is complete inside the 30 for the 29 first down Seminole. It's a good play, and it's something that he needed for his confidence. He's just going to go down and run a square in over the center of the field. The two receivers on the left side go deep to clear it out. Messing comes underneath. If that ball is caught on time and the receiver has enough speed, a lot of times you can come out the other side with a big game. Cameron Davis, linebacker, is hurt and down on the play and timeout for the injured player. So Cameron Davis, who's been dogged by injury. Saw J.C. the other day. He was, In fact, he was in Miami speaking to the uh, Orange Bowl prayer breakfast, and then he flew over here to speak to the uh, Sugar really, Bowl really prayer breakfast. really proud of him. I think he is just become a sensational young man. Class oh. act, 29 yard line, 17 to three. The Florida Gators have the lead. And the Seminoles now with that first down, get one here that sure would make the trip to the clubhouse easier. He's got a man wide open. Touchdown, E.G. Green. The Florida defenders ran together and fell down, and it was a gift for Green. And the Seminoles. Indeed, that will put a little spring in your step.
The kick by Bentley is good. And it's 17 to 10 with 7.28 to play in the first half. And Bobby feels a whole lot better. Just what Bobby ordered. Take a look. Here's the receiver. He's going to go down to the center. And as the quarterback rolls out, the free safety is going to come this way. And the receiver is going to make back across the green. Receiver goes up the field. Now stop it right here. He will. The receivers are going to run it. The defenders are going to run into each other. They'll both fall out. He breaks to the middle. You never get anybody that wide open. And Busby does a smart thing by just laying it up. He knew he had him wide open. Good move like he's going to the outside. That's just good coaching right there. Good coaching and big play for Florida State. How much fun do you think those two DBs are going to have when they go to lunch with uh, Bob Stoops? That's embarrassing, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Big play for Busby. He knows. He knows that the, that the run is being shut down with Warwick Dunn, and he has to come through. 17 to 10 ball game. Suddenly everything looks brighter for the Seminoles and their faithful. And here's the kickoff, a low line drive that goes through the end zone. It'll come back to the 20. First down for the Gators. Now you got a penalty flag sitting up there on about the 18 yard line. That came pretty late, didn't it? Let's check in with Swanee for a moment. Well, Keith, just a little bit of bad news for the senior Cameron Davis defensive end. He sprained his right knee, and the doctors tell me he is out for the rest of this ball game. Not the way he wanted to end his last ball game as a Gator, Keith. First down. All right, Swanee, that's a personal foul call against Florida State. And it moves the ball out to the 35. Watch the left side of the screen here. See if we can catch something. Yeah, that's, that's right there and through that. So the Seminoles now having absorbed the personal foul call and having scored the touchdown, all jacked up, smother that play just about the line of scrimmage. Oh, the quarterbacks are doing. Let's have a little quarterback comparison. Danny Werfel, the Heisman Trophy winner. Numbers are very similar to Thad Busby, who's been a little bit inconsistent this year, but tonight is doing what his team needs, and that is coming through. Heisman Trophy winners don't always win in the Sugar Bowl. And many of them have had a hard time here. This is to Riddell Anthony trying to run a wide receiver screen back into the middle of the field, and they get about three or four yards on the play. And the Seminoles now are really flying around on defense. Number 45 is Henry Crockett, a senior out of Pompano Beach. They are going to lose some real talent from the defensive team this year. Just, the just mention the two defensive ends. Yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Bush. Uh, He's a junior. Yeah, Bush He's is back. The two linebackers, Crawford and Crockett and Crawford are gone. And we got folks bouncing around. Looked like the Werfel tried to give them a hard uh, count, and uh, Mo Collins uh, moved on the play. It's obvious that 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 Spurrier has had Werfel work on his cadence to try to control the line of scrimmage. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Remains third down. Now he gets the Seminoles to jump initially, but watches his uh, right tackle. See his right tackle moves. Yeah, Mo's looking at Peter Bulware. Yeah. You really can't <laughs> <bother him>. <laughs> <laughs> Third down now and 11. Werfel gets it away. And a penalty flag is on from the linesman across the way. And I don't think that play's going to hold up. I figured went up to make the catch. It's one of those kind of things that very oftentimes is Dead ball. holding. Ball stuck. Stuck. And it's ball stuck. It's got to be it's got to be the tackle on that side if the linesman watch the four side tackle 79 Collins he backing up just backing up a little bit a 
There he is on the right side of your screen, Mo Collins, still blocking on Bulware, just moves a little, and the lines, the linesman on the far side is looking right at him. That's nine flags now on the Gators for 55 yards. It's those types of things. It's not so much always the yardage, it's what it takes away from you. That's right. It took that play away. And it's now third and 16. And a big difference. Look out here. Oh, he got loose. And Werfel goes down hard. The ball is blocked by Jack and Green. Danny Werfel was just ripped as he let it go, but he hit his man right where he had to hit him. And it's a big play for the Gators. It's a good call. Third and long. Go ahead and look at this. There's nobody in the middle here. It's one on one. It's third and long. Go ahead and throw it downfield. Maybe you'll hit it, or maybe you'll get a defensive interference call. Okay, it's easy for Green. Now watch what's going on at the other end. Watch this. Wham, wham. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, well, I'm glad I'm not there with Danny. <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying, with all, with all the attention, that was no foul. No there. foul. No, yeah. no, no foul. Yeah. Just clean, hard yeah. football. <laughs> but Steve, I, I don't know, he's probably jumping up and down about it. Werfel lets it go again, right on the number. I hear you get to lose. It's a touchdown for the Gators. Oh, boy. You beat on him. You beat on him like an old church bell. is now 13 of 22 246 yards and two touchdowns and we've got 518 to play in the first half Edmiston for the point Mark Moots it through and the Gators respond to the Seminoles with a touchdown to make it a 24 to 10 ball game you've got the most accurate passer in college football and you've got single coverage here and over here and what you're going to have is the wide receiver just running a little slant one on one and if you don't get to the quarterback he's going to kill you now this is the advantage of artificial turf look at that stop and great running ability both Hilliard and Anthony on the other side have the ability to run with the ball afterwards take a look from behind the defense Blitz, Bush, and Crockett, both blitz. The difference in this game, Keith, is in the first game, they were getting to work for. Now he's getting rid of the ball because you don't, you're playing indoors. It's perfect condition. There's no wind blowing the ball. You couldn't want any better conditions if you were a throwing team than an indoor dome stadium, artificial turf. Team will kick it off now. I'm Hilliard. Is that a fine season? Oh, One thing about it, the uh, defensive guys don't get a whole lot of rest when you do it that way. High, high kick by Teague. Four yard line for Cole. Florida special teams have done very well tonight. Ball is on the 21 yard line where it'll be first down for Florida State. Busby is at quarterback. Hilliard came into the ball game with 29 career touchdowns. That's second in SEC history. Two outstanding receivers, Keith. Uh, Anthony and Hilliard. Well, that green isn't bad. Well, green, you're right. <laughs> you talk about duos, though. It's... First down from the 21 now. Let's see if the Seminoles can do something. Low snap. Busby handles it. People after him. Throws the ball. Dropped. Incomplete. Flying. He went to the safety valve. Pooh Bear Williams, the fullback. And there was uh, no 
real reason uh, that play could work with Bates bearing down on him, and it didn't. I mean, Bates was just running downhill. Bates, uh, kind of a loose wire at times. He's a leader of that defense. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he's all conference. He's a middle linebacker. He's a player. He uh, five five players on that Gator defense were all SEC. They can play. Well, you're a line, middle linebacker like that. You got to see bolts of lightning every once in a while. Busby step tries to get away from the pressure, but he can't do it. Man, uh, right down in the middle of all of the melee and making the tackle is Big Ed Chester. That's Chester's second sack of the night. To the left side, that's long 51, and really this is just a a coverage sack. The quarterback tried to get out of there, and uh, Gators came in with 48 sacks on the year, which was tops in the SEC. They've got three tonight. It is now third down and 16 with the ball on the 15-yard line for the Seminoles. They snap it to Dunn. And Warwick Dunn cannot get loose. Every time he moves, there's somebody moving with him. They'll have to punt it again. Bobby made a well advertised decision that he was not going to do the play calling. But this is that may change. This is what he does right now, Keith. Right here. He is motivating his team and he coaches his coaches. He ran down there to get that offense fired up. Oh, that's a good kick by Sean Liss. But look at Green. He's taken down at about the 47-yard line. Coming up at halftime, the Nokia Best Connection sweepstakes will feature this man, Greg Smith, from Lutcher, Louisiana. That's down by Baton Rouge. He's going to get to throw one football, try to throw it through a one-square-foot opening. And if he can do it, from a distance of about 12 yards, he will win a million dollars. And if he does, I'm going with him. I'm going to go down and introduce ourselves. <laughs> He's a left-hander. You never know. Might no. pop it right through there. Nobody in the backfield except the quarterback. Trips at the bottom of the picture. Worthle. Being harassed and harangued one more time by Mr. Bullware. Bullware is just going to run around Pillar. I think it's uh, Zach on that side. No, that's the tight end. There's no way the tight end, Allen. You can't expect your <laughs> you can't expect your tight end to block that you, man. You call him Mister in the second quarter. He keeps playing like this. He'll be served. Yeah, he was sick too the before the ball game. Bullware. Second down. Call it 11. Passes away and batted down by the defender on the play. Number four, Troy Saunders. This ball was almost picked off. The receiver stopped and Danny threw it a little bit further to the inside. Riddell Anthony, the intended receiver. Anthony at the top of the screen is going to go down one little curl. Watches the ball's inside a little bit. Saunders almost had had a piece of that. As, Actually, uh, Riddell knocked it down, didn't he? Crockett, number 45, yep. goes over and says hello. Yep. There are times when the receiver has to beat the defender. Keep that other fellow from going the other way. Third down, 11. That's down the middle. Down to the 40-yard line, and a penalty flag is thrown on the far side of the field. The pass caught by Jacques Green from Fort Valley, Georgia, right in front of Byron Capers. Something to do with somebody downfield. An eligible receiver downfield. Steve wants to know. Steve wants to know who it was. Who was it? 
And he obviously doesn't like it. <laughs> Everything, everything about Steve's career is right on his face. He's not, he's not hiding any of his emotions. All right. He worked that hard. If he did, he'd blow up. Can I <laughs> think being that intense? His, his young son, uh, Steve Jr., is on the staff as a graduate assistant, and he, he had, uh, adopted a son, too, with Scotty. Third down now and 16 for the Gators. A 24 to 10 ball game and it's in the air and it is incomplete. And it is Troy Saunders making the play on Riddell Anthony. Saunders comes up a little tender but yeah. he's made two good plays in a row. And in the punt comes Robbie Stevenson. D. Feaster is deep for Florida State. Florida and the state, Keith, needs some, something out of their special teams or their defense. That's where they have the advantage. Florida has the best offense, no question, but Seminoles need something out of their special teams. Whoa, Stevenson got most of that one. 16-yard line for Feaster. He got some room. That one man, number 16, got outside and grabbed him by the coattail and pulled him down. Brian, uh, uh, Xavier McCray, 46, did it. Now let's spend a moment with John Saunders. All right, Keith, thanks a lot. Coming up at halftime, Todd will break down the first half, and Florida looks like an entirely different team this time around. Yeah, much more physical on both lines of scrimmage, and the move of Danny Werfel into the shotgun has been a great move for Florida. They have responded to the challenge by Steve Spurrier. We'll have a chance to talk with him at halftime as well. Right now, Keith, back up to you. Okay. Two minutes. That's plenty of time for uh, these offenses to score. Oh, he's from the 34-yard line. Under center, Busby having a little trouble. Somebody after him all the time. Pass completed to E.G. Green. Green is taken down inside the 45 at the 43 of Florida. Clock stops as they move the chains. A minute and 49 to go in the first half. Well, if you like the running game, you won't like this game much because there's not much running on either side. Twenty-four ten, Florida leading. Go back to the shotgun. Busby going big. And Cooper can't get to the ball, and a penalty flag comes out of the pocket. Weary lost the ball. Weary did not see the ball. I think you've got an interference call right here. If so, that will be the 11th Florida penalty. We haven't even played a half yet. Randy was warned, get a good night's sleep. <laughs> Before the game. Pass interference. Yep. On the defense. 15-yard penalty from the pre previous spot. Automatic. First down. Weary is number 24. He loses sight of the ball and then just runs to the receiver, puts his arm out on the receiver, and Cooper is trying to catch it. It's a nice call by the official. It's a really an easy call and probably a smart play by Weary because he, he lost where the ball was and he says, I'm going to the receiver and just interfere with him. 28 yard line, first down for the Moles. Ball is handed off to Warwick Dunn. Tucked it back, runs into trouble at the 25. Lawrence Wright right up on the line of scrimmage and involved in that defensive play but there's a Gator shaken up it's uh, Keith Council a defensive tackle teams all year have come in against Florida State and said we're going to stop Warwick Dunn and they'll put seven or eight players up in the box to stop the uh, stop the offense and he's faced this all year and for the last three years he's made over a thousand yards each of those years it's just been a minute Davis it appears and now uh, we'll see about Keith Council that's talking to Mark Rick who is the offensive coordinator upstairs 
There's a look at Mark there in the middle. He calls all the plays. Uh, Bobby has turned that over to him. Bobby just kind of coaches the players on the sideline, gets them motivated, and, and tells the coordinators, Keith, and I like this. He says, he says, don't, don't be afraid to let it all go. Let, you know, he says, if you have to blitz to Mickey Andrews, go ahead and blitz. And if you let it all hang out, he talks to the Mark Rick, don't be afraid to throw it deep and, and do what you need to do. Don't be uh, conservative. So now at a minute 10, Busby back to throw it. And throws high and incomplete. He had the ball where Messon could not reach it. He got his hands on it, it was too high and could have been picked off. Tico Brown had a look at it, didn't quite get there. Brown is an important personality in that uh, defensive secondary coming back from injury. He was right through his hands. Anytime you have a tip ball and it's that high and in the air that long, hold your breath. Defenses have a great shot. At it. To the sideline. He gets past the marker. He gets a first down. Does not, however, get out of bounds. It's on Ray Cooper. So now they have stopped it on the sideline at 55 seconds to move the chains. Those coming up put the ball down at the 12 and first down Seminoles. The national championship sitting right in the middle of the table. These two teams are scrapping about. Busby gives to Dunn. He's got some room. He's got a block from Green. He's got a touchdown. Finally, Dunn finds a way. rushing in the first half. Seventy is Thomas. Good block right here. Right there by G. E. G. Green that comes up. Dunn has always played well against the Gators and played very well in big games. And this is the first really uh, play that he's made in this ball game. Good block by the fullback. And he just outruns right number four to the sideline. So Warwick Dunn canters in to make it a seven point ball game. The Seminoles with 40 seconds to go. In the first half of play, pulled within seven. And uh, brighten the horizon considerably for the Seminoles. This is a short kick that's finally controlled by Elijah Williams. And Williams comes back up to about the 33-yard line. In the 1995 Sugar Bowl, when Florida State and Florida had a rematch after a 31 tie, Dunn had uh, the first pass completed of his collegiate career, a 73-yarder to Omar Ellison. And the Seminoles won the ball game over the Gators by 23-17. He's awfully important to this offense, and the Gators know that. They know he can throw passes. He threw one 33 days ago, November 30th, in Tallahassee. They know that they need to stop Warwick Dunn. Hand the ball off, goes to Terry Jackson, and he gets outside, and he's got some room, and he's a big fella. And he runs all the way down to the 31-yard line of Florida State, and there's 27 ticks remaining on the clock. Better not go to sleep. Not on this offense. They scored too quickly. They got a timeout left. 
Bobby's writing down some notes for what, what he wants to say at halftime. Looks like he's already got about five or six on that sheet. Yeah, he may need an extra five minutes. Yeah. That's intended down the sidelines for Riddell uh, Anthony, and uh, he was overthrown. He had no chance. Also was well covered. Dad Busby getting uh, all the conversation he can with Mark Rick, even though halftime is at hand. Troy Saunders has come into the ball game at that cornerback position, Bob, and done a pretty good job with Anthony. He has. He has. Mickey Andrews has always played a lot of defensive backs, and because of the injury, injury to roll, Cozy and Saunders are rotating over there at that corner position. Anthony has two catches for 13 yards. That's all. He's caught 22 in the last two games. Pressure coming, Bowler. He's got a hold of him. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Vernon Crawford. Going to somebody that can run. Crawford is decked hard by Wilson. But finally they get Crawford down around the 38-yard uh, line, and time runs out. Well, here's a look from behind the quarterback. Bullware again will not go down, tries to make a play. And Crawford, 47, sees visions of grandeur right here. He's looking Watch here now. You're going to see Werfel get busted right there. Boom. He needs to give it up. He finally gave it up, but he gave it up too late. Yep. Pretty exciting stuff, but the half is over and at halftime it is Florida 24 Florida State 17 and we'll be back with John Mark Edmiston up and in 45 to 20 Florida From behind the defense, look at the hole. Great blocking in that offensive line. Taylor does the rest. Out of NYPD Blue, Jimmy Smith and Dennis Fran starring in an all-new Blue Tuesday. Think back about a month ago. 33 days when uh, Florida and Florida State played. Yep. Florida was number one in the country and undefeated. Yep. They got beat and dropped to number four. Yep. Everybody else in front of them was undefeated. Right. Except Nebraska. They had a loss. Then Nebraska got beat. Incomplete pass. Then Nebraska got beat and dropped below, and Florida moved up to three. And then Arizona State got beat yesterday and Florida now moved up to two theoret theoretically and now they play the number one team and now they're back they beat Florida State now they're back up to the top what if they would have dropped from one to five behind Ohio State Well, I think their long tenure is number one, which lasted 10 weeks. So there's certainly something of an influence there. And I think losing on the road at Tallahassee yeah. in a close game. Yeah. Yep. Well, the team, if Florida goes ahead and wins this, and I right now don't see any particular reason why they shouldn't, 45 to 20, you're going to have Florida State, Florida, BYU, Arizona State, and Ohio State all with one loss. The team that uh, would uh, possibly be in a posture, the only team I think really to be in a posture of challenging the Gators' claim for number one might be Ohio State. And I don't think they will get a vote, not vote, to do that. That's Melvin Pearsall who finally sees the ball for the first time tonight, the tight end, and has a big play out of it, moves the ball all the way to the 48-yard line. I do think this, though, uh, Bob, and I'm going to say it plainly and clearly, I think there's some feeling uh, about the alliance 
and uh, that probably Ohio State might lose some uh, votes because they have not been part of the alliance up to this point in time. Here's a look uh, giving Florida the win and Florida State the loss. Yep. Five teams with one loss. Pearsall had that one on his fingers for a while but never did have possession so it's an incomplete forward pass. And, and really, Keith, it all depends when you lose. Absolutely. If you lose your last game, like Arizona State, and if you win your last game, like Florida has, and who you beat, Florida, Florida lost to Florida State when they were, Florida State was number two, and then they beat Florida State when they were number one. They worked themselves back up. I think they got the right team on top. I think I think you got to give it to Florida. I wouldn't disagree with it. Didn't hit as he threw, and it bounces away incomplete. It will be then the first national championship for a Florida football team, meaning that there now rests in the state of Florida a total of six banners. It's enough to make South Carolina and Alabama cranky. Six banners in the last 12 or 13 years. Yes, right. Not to mention Georgia and Tennessee. <laughs> and Indiana and Ohio and Michigan and California. Seven and a half minutes to play in the game and Busby throws down the middle and is picked off. Picked off, yeah. It's Tico Brown. And Tico coming back to a pass in the 49-yard line. So trying to force one down the middle for Peter Warwick. It sails away from him and it is picked off. And that might have been the door slammer. Go back and take a look at that last interception. It comes off the foot of Shea Showers, number two, Tico Brown. It didn't hit the ground. It came off his foot, right? Right. It's going to be Florida putting the ball in play all the way back on the 30-yard line instead of having it up on the 49 where it was a minute ago. So apparently... Um, I don't understand that. I don't either. I don't understand why they moved it back. He gave the ball interception, but... That's Fred Taylor, and he... He uh, may have one yard out of that carry. Here are the national champions who have uh, come out of this bowl game as champions, and you can see there are a lot of them. Much more than you might think. And I'm humming along here looking at it, and from 1976, at least I've done all of those. And boy, have we had some great games. Well, I didn't, uh, 73 was, uh, I didn't do that one, but uh, there have been some wonderful football games played here in the Super Bowl. Wow. Oh, it's an inadvertent whistle call. Uh, I guess somebody blew the whistle because they thought the ball had hit the ground, but uh, that's what the officials explained the reason for moving from the Florida State 49 all the way back to the Florida 30. Well, you got to hand it to uh, Danny Werfel. Goes to New York, wins the Heisman Trophy, plays for a national championship, and it looks as though they're going to get it. Wouldn't Heisman winners have not always uh, done terribly well, however, in, in, the, in the Sugar Bowl game. Toretta lost here. Uh, Werfel's going to win here. Davey O'Brien was a Heisman winner. Uh, the, let me ask you a question there, Hoss. TCU. The last Heisman Trophy winner to win a national championship. Danny Werfel. <laughs> no, no, you, you don't have to look too far now. No. I got up at five this morning. Play Why are you for, asking me Played for the other team. CW. Charlie Ward. There you go. Florida's, uh, Florida's 45 points, incidentally, scored in a new sugar, is a new sugar bowl record. The old record was 42 by Georgia Tech back in 1954 when Pepper Rogers quarterbacked the Ramblin' Rex to a 42 to 19 win over West Virginia. We have two dead ball foul 
personal fouls against the defense. It'll be a cumulative total of 30 yards. Oh, my goodness. Here's Lynn Swan. Keith, we were talking about Danny Warfel and all the individual awards, but he knows it's the team that's most important for him. So he's had this hat designed. It's going to be just for his teammates on the floor of the Gators. And when the season's over, when this game is over, they're all going to get it as a personal gift from Danny Warfel. He is team all the way, Keith. He's a great youngster. Quality kid, Keith. Not only did he win the Heisman, but he won the National Football Foundation and Hall of Fame Madrati Award for scholarship, which goes to the nation's top scholar athlete. So he won the athletic award in the Heisman, and he won the scholar athlete award. And you don't do that very often in the same year. Those two teams averaging 10 yards and uh, 10 penalties per game. And about 100 yards coming in. Well, they've gone past that tonight. And uh, Florida State just absorbed two 15-yard penalties for a total of 30. And it's first down for the Gators at the Florida State 42-yard line. They got enough points. All they've got to do now is run out the clock and uh, go have a big party. And I'll bet they will. Bobby Bowden says, uh, I don't like rematches, uh, especially, again, an, an in-state rival. After he, he got a week to celebrate the win over Florida, and he says, uh, when they named the rematch, he says, that's like losing 365 days of bragging and strutting rights uh, because you beat your in-state rival. Yeah, but they're still one and one. Uh, that's true, but that's, you know the one everybody's going to talk about. Is this one? This so. team, this team will be back next year. They'll lose Werfel, and uh, Steve will have to develop another quarterback. If they keep Hilliard, if Mike doesn't go out, and it's anticipated that Anthony will, but if Ike doesn't go, then they, they'll be a pretty good football team. Hello, Johnson, probably the quarterback. Ball is on the 23. He hits the first down. Running the ball. And that's going to be another first down and another penalty flag down around the 13-yard uh, line. The one big advantage that uh, Spurrier and the Gators had coming into this game, Keith, this is only the second year that the Alliance has had a championship game Spurrier and the Gators have played in both of them. And last year, the embarrassment of getting beat at the Fiesta Bowl by uh, Tom Osborne in Nebraska had to sting and hurt for quite a long time. Another person at Well, I think you're just seeing the frustration here. Of the Seminoles. Well, as we wind it down and, and looking at what has happened in the postseason play, BYU winds up with the greatest number of wins, a 14-1. Uh, Stanford's uh, big win indicates they'll be around uh, not next year. Washington looks like they'll be pretty good out in the West Coast next year. Uh, it figures that uh, the same people are going to be prominent in the Big Ten next year. And uh, I think these two teams right these here. These two teams, teams yes. Yeah. They just got talent uh, yep. behind talent. They lose Warwick Dunn. He's a senior. Busby's back. And, uh, and Kendra, he's going to have to play sooner or later. And he'll get his chance this spring to compete for the quarterback job. Spurrier loses his two top quarterbacks, Werfel and Brian Schottenheimer. Let's take a look at now, It was not a good night for him. Only... Uh, 28 yards rushing and a touchdown and one pass reception for 12 yards. Wanted to come out and be with his teammates. This is Taylor. Stuff for Warwick Dunn, uh, the great young man that he is. Uh, five brothers and sisters that he has helped raise since the death of his mother. Comes back here to his home state. Just up the road to uh, Baton Rouge. 
came back to Florida. He was, you know, I mean, the Florida State. He was. Everybody thought he'd go in the NFL, and he wanted to come back and try and win a championship. He came back, hoping uh, to be here for this game, and he made it. He just haven't worked out for him. Third down and goal. The ball at the four-yard line. Perry Jackson. Boom. Close, but not in. He's got some leverage when he comes around that corner. But he just misses getting into the end zone. Adele Anthony comes back into the ball game. Werfel is playing it out. Mobley's the fullback, Jackson the running back. And it's fourth down and goal at the one. Jackson. This is convincing. After the point, 52-20. I think that we've been talking about, Keith, with five teams having one loss. has been on Steve's mind the last uh, six, seven, eight minutes, and I think I think the, the last two or three touchdowns were a statement to say, hey, let's beat this team and beat them good so we can get some more votes. Well, they've got a 52-20 lead with 2-12 to play. About the 12 by Feaster, and he's still pounding with it. Comes out to about the 35-yard line. Sunday night, Lewis and Clark moves to a new time, 7-6 Central, with a brand new episode, followed by America's Funniest Home Videos, and then Jack Wagner stars in a world premiere movie event, Echo, on the Sunday night movie, the weekend best Sunday on ABC. Dan Kendra. Write the name down. He's in there at quarterback now. Florida State. Came out of Pennsylvania. Daddy played for Bobby Bowden at West Virginia. His first pass, he's hit as he throws. It is intercepted. And a penalty flag on the play. Ernie Bandor. Defensive tackle. So Kendra comes in and gets a brutal initiation as he is belted just as he throws. The ball pops up in the air. And it is intercepted. It was Dimitri Jackson who hit Kendra. Place man. Five yards down to Florida State. First oh. down. Ten, On top four. of that, the Seminoles get hit with a face mask ball. Steve. Now, Brian Schottenheimer will get some reps in the ball game. Marty Schottenheimer's son. Steve, why do you think, uh, I mean, uh, Keith, how you, why do you think Steve put on his uh, raincoat? His, one of the all-time greats leaves the field right there. Yes, he's put numbers in the book at the University of Florida that until they change the game may never be erased. Sports is a tough thing sometimes when you figure the circumstance for young Kendra getting a chance to play in the Sugar Bowl game, even though the cause is lost. And uh, holding through is 96 Connell Spain to take down uh, Schottenheimer on the snap. Obviously, there are penalty flags. And uh, years wise, Steve Spurrier's got on the jacket. He expected it. <laughs> now he took it off. They'll go get another bucket and come back at him. <laughs> you know, Steve, an old quarterback, he, he was thinking he put that jacket on for one reason. Of course. He knew the bucket was coming. Now they ought to outsmart him. They ought to go back and get another bucket of ice and ice water and just come back with that one. 
So the first down now is up the 25-yard line, and it's uh, it's mop-up time. Eugene McCaslin is the tailback. The young Seminoles out there for the first time, a little short-tempered. Uh, that play doesn't go anywhere. So it's a matter of letting the clock run and finishing the ball game and going ahead and pass out the trophies. Schottenheimer came down to the transfer down to the University of Florida because Ryan says he wants to be a coach. And he's come off the field right now. And he wanted to learn the Spurrier system. And uh, he has. This is Noah Brindisi or Brindice in that quarterback right now. And he's the new one to me. There's a lot of pushing and shoving and whacking and cracking as uh, Eugene McCaslin runs across the field with the football and now we're inside a minute and the issue has long since been resolved here the Florida Gators number three have defeated Florida State number one number two Arizona State lost yesterday in the Rose Bowl and the Florida Gators are now anticipating a national championship their first the young man in his quarterback right now number 12 Doug Johnson he is a freshman from Gainesville, Florida. He's on a baseball scholarship uh, right now. But a lot of people think this may be the quarterback right here this year. He's the air there. difference with your team's performance before in this game in the last one? They just beat us in every part of the game. I thought the kicking, the punch that rolled dead on our one, I think they scored off of both of them, I'm not sure. But this kept us in the hole and we couldn't, uh, just couldn't capitalize. They just beat the heck out of us in every part of football. Congratulations on a great season. Let's go to Lynn Swan. Okay. Steve, congratulations. I think well, it's going to be a national championship for you. We've got to let you say how you feel at uh, this moment. Swanee, uh, God has smiled on the Gators, no question about it. Texas did what they had to do, and then Ohio State did it. Uh, of course, we hadn't won it yet. we got to wait on the vote tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, it'll work out, but, you know, God smiled on us, and Danny Warf was the best. He's the best player that ever played college quarterback, I'll tell you that. You, you, got help, you got help from the right places, but the game plan had to come together, a much more physical ball game by your team for the great well, game plan. Well, we had to get in the shotgun, and Danny's good in there, and, and get the ball off, and then we was able to run a little bit later, but... Danny did it all, and uh, the whole team played super. Proud of everybody. Well, we'll, talk to, we'll talk to Danny. Danny, it was a sensational ball game. Your thoughts, your last game as a Gator. So I have to give all glory and praise to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. It's been a wonderful uh, career. So many great friends, so many great moments. It's definitely one of the best. Defense, offense, special teams, punt team, everybody played their best tonight, and we're just real excited. You played the whole game in that shotgun. You felt, you looked like you've been in it all your life. Hey, you got to do what you got to do, and we had to do that to win. So just thankful, very blessed, and I just share all the credit with the teammates. Danny, we wish you the best. Thanks You've been a, a lot. at the college football. Thanks. The great inspiration for young people. All right, I'm out of here. I'm done. All right, Swanee, thanks very much. We hope you enjoyed it. The Florida Gators roll tonight to a victory over the Florida State Seminoles. Happy New Year to you. We hope life is good to you in 97.